this is the first lecture on calculus 2 on differential calculus of vector valued functions. Now first off what is a vector valued function? It's a function mapping from r to rn where n is any integer and most of the time what we've done so far n has just been 1 mapping from the reals to the reals. Now rules for differentiation of vectors we have period the vector r uh, x where it's split into parts x1 and x2 and we can split this up to so say x1i plus x2j and what we do here is we just differentiate each part separately so dx over dt is x1 prime i plus x2 prime j now prime if you don't know is just shorthand for the derivative Right, you can also multiply by a scalar. So in our case we have u2, it's going to be a real function, and we're going to times that by our vector x. Now, we're going to use the same x as we used in the previous question, where x is x1 and x2. So, we have here ut times x1 and ut times x2. And what we want to find is the derivative. So we have ux prime is equal to d over dt of u times x1 and d over dt of u times x2. And to do this, we look at it and we have the product of two functions. So we can use the product rule to differentiate it, which gives us u prime x1 plus u x1 prime and u prime x2 plus u x2 prime. Now, here, because we've got the sum, we can split it up into two different additions. So we have u prime x1 and u prime x2 plus u x1 prime plus u x2 prime. And if we look at this a bit further, we can see that this equals u prime x plus u x prime, which is the product rule. Now, here is another example. If modulus r equals c, and c is a constant, then we have to prove that r is perpendicular to r prime. And we have to remember from vectors that if you find the dot product of two vectors and they equal zero, then it's always perpendicular, but they must equal zero. Now something else we can remember is that r, squ well, r squared, well we can work it out, r squared is equal to c squared, and that's quite simple, we'll just square each side, and this is also equal to r times r, because r squared is r times r. Now, the derivative of r squared is the derivative of c squared because they're the same and the derivative of c squared because it's a constant is zero now r squared is also as we've just said here equal to r dot r so the and the derivative of that is something we have to do using the product rule which we used in an earlier question so we've just said by finding the derivative of that that zero is equal to r prime r plus r r prime using the product rule which leads us to that zero equals two r prime r because we can take that out as a factor and put it into two and then we can move this two over so that zero equals r prime times r which is what we've just proved here so we've just proved that r is perpendicular to r prime because it equals zero Another thing you can do is you can prove the cross product. So if we have two, two, our two vectors, we have x as t, t squared and t cubed, and y as t cubed, t squared and t. And if you want to find the derivative, the derivative of x is 1 because of the t, 2t t because of the t squared, and 3t squared because of the t cubed. And it's similar for y as well, except it's in a different order.
because of the numbers we've picked. Now the cross product of xy is t cubed minus t5, and we're using these here, we're using these here, so it's the cross product, and t to the 6 minus t squared, t cubed minus t5, and if you don't know how to do the cross product, then look it up in vectors, you did it last term, we should have, it's where you have the 3x3 three three table with the i, j, and k across the top, if you can't remember. Now we need to find the derivative of the cross product. So we're looking at this. We have 3t squared, because we have t cubed here. 5t to the 4, because it's t to the 5. 6t5 minus 2t, 3t squared minus 5t4. And that's the derivative. Now be careful here, as with the, sometimes you might forget that you have to subtract the second one and it's just adding this bit first and last. Other ones you can do, but I haven't had time to do it because it has to be a certain length, are the dot product and the chain rule. And these are both done using the product rule to prove them. But again, you just split it up and solve it and differentiate each part separately.